All right, here we are, our next match in the High Rollers 2 Openweight Division quarterfinals, number two. We saw both guys here with kind of similar styles in their first matches. Top control, guys. Top controls. Both guys want to snap down. Especially our man in the all black, not the red. He wants, always wants to snap down. Yeah. He was attacking chokes the entire. Those are big boys. Match. They don't want to be on their back. No. On the back is a little bit of no man's land for guys like these. You can just tell by the way they're built. I'm sure they have some good attacks from there, but I think they are most efficient from the top. Nice little sweep attempt there. Nice the, little the butt scoot to get back set. to his feet. That's that's the, not the way you usually see a butt scoot in a jiu-jitsu competition. Nice level change to a double leg and just snatches him down off to a bit of a single leg. Oh. He had that He had that <clears throat> takedown. Yeah, he should have finished that. You got to elevate that leg, man. Now he is underneath. And we saw in the first round, dude in red can ride well, can kill time, can aggressively just keep going for limbs but also maintaining position and he's got that wrist trapped and he's got <laughs> the dope pants <laughs> don't forget about that when the you're psychedelic pants someone. always check out their fashion it's, it's the biggest tell the guy with the nicest pants are going to win most of the time because they put all this effort into well, why would you wear nice pants so, if you're not going to win? I like that position right there that he's in. I usually use that to put that other hook in. Just keep shaking and pry them open and then put that other hook in. He's not using it for that, though. He's almost uh, it's almost like a bit of a lockdown on one leg from the top, keeping just a single leg ride. And the man in black is trying to peel those feet apart to yeah. <clears throat> probably try to extract like that to leg. You see the way he's doing a little a bit of a lockdown right there on the leg. He's going to maintain that position. He's not really looking to advance his choke too much, just kind of holding it over and under, but I love the position. Yeah, with that under on the left side, he's not going to be able to turn away from it. Yeah, but then he's going to have to get his hips up now or roll. If I was at him on top, I would roll him across to the left side now. you got to roll him across or you might get reversed here. But, hey, he maintain, maintains top position. Nice work here. You got to fight. You got to seal off, man. It's like that's just wrestling one on one. You got to seal your elbows off and yeah, give him nothing you, to hold on to. Usually, like in, in folk style wrestling, you'd probably pull the guy off the other side because you can't clasp. Mm -hmm. But here he's able to clasp and keep the position. Usually, you have to switch the guy. And there's a chance for a man to change position. They're back on up. Two biggest competitors here. There's one other gentleman, the bald last uh, match of the first round. He is a bit probably in the same weight category as these two. But since this is an open tournament. Don't matter. Don't matter. It's an open weight class. Skill level is the criteria for tournament bracketing. Yeah, fail takedown there. Our man in red is working himself towards a victory as we're about three and a half minutes into the first and only round here. And as we saw in the previous match and in the match before that, it's all about being on top and getting the ref to choose. You don't got to worry about uh, EBI rules yet. We're not there yet. No EBI rules in the first round of the tournament. Is he trying an Ezekiel from the bottom? He was. With no gi. Your name is not. Yeah, and if I'm his coaches, we're about one minute left. It's hey, give, give up your back. Give up moves because you, you, if you're on bottom here, you're going to lose. So open up. Yeah. See if the guy can make a mistake and something can slip out and you can slap on maybe a, a last minute submission or put the guy in so much danger that the referee sway it can sway the decision. But. Yeah. But, it's also this, but this is what we saw in, in the first round from Red too. Yeah. Got on top. Really held that half guard. Didn't oh, didn't really look to always get past the half guard. And I, I like that. I like that move. Of he did the same thing even when he was behind him, controlling one leg. And now he's controlling one leg. That's what he's doing. Yeah, it's yep. hard. It's very hard to move from that position. He doesn't really give you very much openers, and he's not looking for very much submissions. He's just, he's kind of just pummeling, keeping his position. He's uh, 
smart mat awareness, and he takes Full him out here with the last couple seconds. And we're going to see our man in red going to be our second semifinalist here. Doing a good job of dominating some guy that... Is he looking for a Kamui? Yep. Yes, he is. He's not going to get it. No. Oh, no, oh, oh, wait, he might. He might. We might see the time end here, but... There's a nice walk around there that I like. When they, when I they like hide that, that Kamori is going for. Ooh, ooh. ooh. And, and Did he get like it? He got it. Looks like he got the Kamori finish I didn't know if that there. was time or he just got it clear. Either way, our victor here in red getting himself on to the semifinals. Ekans. A guy to deal with. Very tough dude. Big. You end up underneath him, you're going to very least be stuck. <laughs> <laughs>